I'm Renee Raphael. Um, I'm from UC Irvine and I'm here as a Renaissance Society of America visiting scholar. So the period I study and work on, this is one's called the Scientific Revolution. Uh, it's often described as a period in which the way people studied the natural world changed. So it wasn't just that, you know, we get sort of better answers to old questions, but we actually ask new questions and we get new methods of knowledge. Um, so one of the things that interests me is how people, as they change the way they study the natural world, and one of the ways that they change is that people start to increasingly use mathematics, is that um, it's to study how their way of doing mathematics changes in response to these new transformations in science in the period. So I'm here doing um, exploratory research for a new project looking at the Savile Collection at the Bodleian Library, which is a collection of books um, that were held by the civilian professors of geometry and astronomy at Oxford in the early modern period and then beyond. Um, and I'm particularly interested in the annotations in the books um, to give an idea of how the professors read and then taught mathematics and then also how they may have used the books for other purposes. My entrance into this field of scholarship was in thinking about um, historians that had studied reading and reading reception, so things like the work by Robert Darton and then historian, literary um, scholars who had thought about things like reader reception and theories of reader reception and the idea that um, to understand what a text means in its time and place you need to understand not just what the author said but how readers responded to the text and they're the ones that are actually closest to the text and can better understand better than us at least you know what the author was probably trying to do what conventions he was speaking to so one idea is this idea of reader reception so how people actually responded to what's found in the text and then sort of related enterprise has been the history of scholarly practices so you can think in terms of, for scientists, things like how do you carry out experiments. Um, but another part of this has been an interest in how scholars read texts and then how they worked with the text they read and then used them to talk to colleagues or to write other texts. Um, so what I'm doing here is looking at these books, which are often largely mathematical, and thinking about this in terms of how do you read a text of mathematics in the period. This is new because it's looking at this history of scholarly practices and the history of reading, um, but even in that genre it's pretty unusual because not very much has been done on things like mathematical reading. So it's this collection of mathematical books um, which are put in place, they're donated by the professors, they're used by the professors and their students, so you have this sort of long-standing community um, that's using the books and then teaching how to read the other thing that's very nice is that the books are, many of them are annotated. So I found those first two books that I said, um, but then as I've been going through, of course many of the other professors are annotating as well. So it's a very interesting collection to look at in terms of these reading practices and how they change over time. And then also questions of pedagogy because the professors of course are often someone that becomes a professor who was once a student. You know, so you see these things evolve over time. Maybe at the beginning of the period when Savile's annotating, he's sort of using sort of something, some style of annotation that looks more humanist. Whereas by the end of the period, what I see in Ward and Wren, and then later on, people are using new styles of mathematics, they're approaching the text differently, they have new goals in mind, and so I'm hoping to use this marginalia as a, as a window into these new goals and these new approaches to reading.